Okay. Now we can start our uh, discussion. So assignment two, basically, we are talking about uh, hedonic price. So basically, this is just the exercises of hedonic price. Okay. Um. So, uh, Abi Aziz, I think it's better for you to mute yourself first because there are so many noises. Okay. Yeah. So. What do I ask uh, you to do the assignment? In assignment two is that you have to prepare a report. And in that report, I'm expecting to see all these five things. So the first one, as you know that you are given a data set. So your data set is actually uh, presented in an Excel file. Okay. So you have to describe this data set. So as I mentioned to you, when we ask when this uh, the statistician or econometrician or economist asked to describe your data sets. So basically, you are asked to do uh, descriptive statistics. Okay? So basically, you will be dealing with a lot of data, like thousands of data. So how to describe it? So definitely, you have to make a summary. So this is your descriptive statistic table. It is there already. So you just have to explain it in in terms of words okay so uh, so basically you can also uh, derive or you can also come up with this uh, table right so when i look at your assignment okay some of you um, are able to come up with this uh, table but the table is not properly documented so you have to actually construct the table in a way that it is very nice it means that you have to uh, build you have to build up your own table not just simply take it from the stata so when you wanted to present your data you shouldn't just simply take it from the software because this table even though the items are all correct so it shows that these are your variables and how many observations do you have and what are the what is the means of each of the variables and deviation minimum values of the variable and maximums even though all the information are here but the way you presented it, you have to make sure that you create a new table so that the, the data will be presented in a nice way. Okay. So currently, everyone is like showing the raw data, raw table that you simply copy and paste from your data software. Okay. Next time, when you are asked by your, your manager or your boss to come up with a, to, or to dis, uh, describe about your data set, you have to, uh, Definitely, you can get all this information from the data, but you have to construct your own table so that your presentation, your data will look nicer. Okay. So, let me see here. So, if you look at here, I have constructed a table, such a very nice table. Okay. So, I classified the variable into continuous variable and dummy variable. Okay. So, under this continuous variable, I put the minimum values something that you have found from uh, your stata, right? So you can start with minimum, you can start with maximum, you can also start with mean or standard deviation. So all these things, even though you have uh, received this from your stata, you can just uh, put in terms of words. Or you can say that, okay, these uh, variables, okay, you are dealing with many variable set. So the variables in the data sets can be divided into two which is continuous and dummy variables. So there are like how many? Four continuous variables, okay? And there are a few dummy variables. So you can also say that for the real sales price, the minimum values is this one, or you can just mention like a few uh, points to describe your variable. So that's it. Basically for economists, when you see this, uh, Descriptive statistic, it will tell you everything about your data. But you just have to present them in a nice way. Okay? So now, that's the first thing that the question asks. Just describe the data set. You just put the, the table in a nice way, you should get one mark. Okay? Remember, as I told you, each of the questions worth one mark. But if you simply just copy and paste from the software, so you should get half mark out of it. Okay, second, report the model that you have found to provide the best fit 
to explain the dependent variable or to explain your model. Okay, so when you wanted to report, so this is like um, <coughs> your exercise for econometric, right? Because in econometric, you have to run regression or whatever model. Okay, in this case, let's assume that you wanted to use regression because we are dealing with your dependent variable is sell price or real sales price. So this is continuous variable. So for continuous variable, normally we will use regression. Okay, if let's say you have a dummy variable 0 and 1, perhaps you may want to use logit or probit. Okay, so let me show here. This is just the exercise for the econometric. Okay, and I'm assuming that you should know how to do it. Okay, so report the model that you have found to provide the best fit to explain your dependent variable. Okay, so now I think someone is coming. Let me double check to allow your friends to join our class. Okay, Halima is here. Cool. Welcome, Halima. So we are actually explaining um, question number two for your assignment. Okay, we have explained number one, and for your information, this uh, discussion is recorded. Okay, so for number two, you want to report your model. Let me write it here. Report model. So how to report your model? So now you are using regression. As I told you, the reason for using regression because you are having or dealing with uh, what? You are dealing with uh, house sales or house price. So you are dealing with continuous variable. That's why you have to use regression. Okay, now, so let me write it here. So for regression, normally you will have your dependent variable here. Okay, so it's a function of independent variable, right? So in this case, you are talking about real sale price. Okay, so when you want to put uh, into a model, so you can put it e equals to beta naught. Beta naught is your constant plus beta 1. And this is perhaps your variable 1 plus beta 2. This is your variable 2 plus whatever it is together with your epsilon, right? Okay, so this is how you want to present or you want to report your model. You don't, um, some of you just give me the result from your stata. So that is the raw result. You have to present it in a nice way, okay? Because in this case, the question asks you to report the model. So how to report it? You have to uh, put your model, you, you have to put your variable into a nice model. So for the real cells, okay, if you look at the value, you have like in terms of continuous variable, right? So let's see the data. So where is the cell? What is the shortcut name for the real cell? So it is prizer. So prizer, um, maybe somewhere to the end. Okay, this one. Okay, um, maybe it is a bit uh, smaller. Okay, I will make it bigger. So the price. So these are actually your independent, your dependent variable. So they are continuous. Okay, normally for continuous variable, we will love, especially when the number is huge. You are dealing with 200,000 plus 1,000 and so on. So when you are dealing with this kind of number, so normally in econometric, we will put long. Okay, mm -hmm. to make sure that your data, your result later on will look nicer. So you put long price, okay, <coughs> equals to, so your beta naught is constant as I mentioned to you. So when you regress your uh, model, you should have the value for your beta naught. So you have to put the value here. Okay, for instance, 0 0.234. So this is your constant. And then you have to put plus. So what is your beta? Beta 2. So maybe this is your, I'm not sure. There must be a value here. Right. So this is the value for your um, second, uh, the first variable. So maybe, um, I don't know, maybe 0 
right? This is for the first, I don't know what, what is the variable. Maybe um, let's put garage plus uh, whatever value here. Okay, I think someone is uh, just join our class. Let me approve it first. Okay, the same person. Okay, so you have to put perhaps this is uh, maybe um, bad or the value is, well, I don't know, maybe just 99. So this is uh, bad plus whatever the variable is until your epsilon. Okay, so <clears throat> this is how you want to uh, present them. But normally in a common or normal standard, uh, when you want to present your model, you have to have parentheses here. So parentheses is this one. So this parentheses is for your standard deviation. So each of them should have their parentheses. And this parentheses should consist of your standard deviation. Okay? So this is how you want to present your data, your model. Not simply just run uh, your model in, uh, from the data and copy and paste into your assignment. Okay, you have to put them in a nice way. Okay, now, so um, so if you have uh, put them in a nice way, you should get uh, one mark. Okay, if you just copy and paste, even without putting putting it nicely, so you should get half. Okay, so this is just a simple exercise. So uh, basically, I'm assuming that you have learned this from your uh, econometric class. So number three, explain the steps. Taken, so you have two things here. You have to explain the step that you have taken to estimate your preferred model. Okay, so let me open a new tab. So the first, this is question three. So the first thing the question asks, explain the step when you estimate your model. Okay. Model is estimated. And second, this is question number three. And the question, second, the, this question said or asked, explain the test applied. What are the tests that you use when you want to estimate your preferred model? So the second part of this question asks to explain the test when you want to estimate your model. So you have two things here. So what are the steps? So the steps is actually steps in uh, choosing the best fit model. It's not that, well, the steps to regress my uh, regression is that I have to click on the command box, I have to run the command, and I have to paste it in. No, that's not the step. Step here is that the steps that you have taken when you wanted to estimate the model. So what are the steps? So as I told you, you are dealing with a large variable. So you have to check which variable uh, among all these are actually the relevant variable. So in econometric, you have relevant or non-relevant variable. Sometimes they may look like uh, independent variable, but they are not relevant. If you put them into your model, you will uh, you will have the problems of multicollinearity. You will have a problems of heterosocharticity. So you have many problems if you put them into your model. So you have many variables, but you have to choose the, the relevant variable only. Right, since you are dealing with many variables, okay, so you have to select them. So definitely, you when you uh, want to explain about the steps, you will have, uh, you will deal with many models. So you will perhaps model one. So this is, uh, what are the variables that you have chosen? Maybe you choose time, um, size, bed, tree, blah, 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 right? And then uh, you estimate it, you will get the result. The result are in terms of R square, right? So what is the functions of R square? R square will tell how much of your independent variable here has have explained your dependent variable. So you want to get a higher R square. Higher R square means that your independent variable are able to explain your dependent variable well. Okay, so. This is the first model that you have estimated. Remember, we are talking about the steps that you want to do to find the best model. And then you may come up with second model. 
model two. So what are the variable? Maybe you think that well, as uh, when I estimate this uh, variable, some of them are not uh, significant. So let's try with second model. So maybe second model you want to put bet two, and maybe you want to put bet four. What else? So let's look at this variable because you have many variables: garage, traffic, distance, and so on. Right? Maybe you want to put. Let me put it here: garage, traffic, and blah blah. And then you get the result in terms of R squared. Okay, now you have two models here, but are they the best fit? So if you want to find the best model, so as we have uh, explained in the workshop, how to compare if you have two models, or if you have many models, which model is the best? So I have mentioned about the commands, right? You have to use the commands to check whether which model will give you the smallest num uh, value of AIC and BIC. Okay, that's why I, uh, I give you, I tell you the commands so that when you have many models, you can choose the best model that have a lower AIC or NBIC. Okay, so this is second, second model. So maybe you are not happy yet. So you have to try many models that will give you the lowest AIC and BIC. Okay, so this is like an exercise. So normally, if you want to estimate a model, definitely you will come up, you will try with this variable, that variable. which So you will play around with so many variables. Mm -hmm. So should we test just five variables here? Maybe this one is 10 variable or maybe 10 variable is not good enough. So you will adjust accordingly. These are the steps that you have to tell. Okay, you have estimated using a few models the first model is this is the variable second model this is the variable so i'm not happy yet i, I check with model 3 until model 10 whatever and finally i found that among all these model uh, maybe model 10 give me the the lowest aic and bic so i choose this model as the best fit of my estimation so these are the steps that i wanted to see okay but i couldn't see it in your assignment Okay, next, um, the second part of question number three, they ask you about the test. What are the tests that you have to apply when you want to estimate the model? Remember, you are using regression. So when we talk about regression, you have some assumption. So we, uh, I also have mentioned to you in our workshop before on the assumption, right? So let me see here. <coughs> Um, where is it? Mm, semester, this is not semester one. Oh, this one. Okay. Um, Simon two. Okay. My do file. Okay. So why do I tell you the comments on uh, how to, how to test? See? How to test multicollinearity, how to test heteroscedasticity, how to test uh, whether the model is correctly specified, how to test the linearity of uh, the normality of the models, and so on. Because all this, uh, see, I put the heading here assumption test. Okay, so uh, regression will have some assumptions. So you have to conduct all these tests so that. Your model is free from error. So if you have an error, you have to correct them, right? So I couldn't see all these tests has been or have been conducted. Some of you just take heteroscedasticity uh, uh, test and that's it. And not many of I I couldn't see you. None of you are doing all the tests. You have to check all these tests. That's why I have mentioned it in the workshop, but. You didn't uh, notice that you have to do, you have to check the assumption. So definitely, if you want to present the best model, you have to check for all the tests. Okay, so you have to tell, okay, um, for the test, I have conducted, well, the first test is to check uh, normality of my data. So these are the results of normality. So it says that my data is normal so that's fine you pass the first test the first assumption second assumption i test for um what 
multicollinearity issue. So uh, I run the regressions, I run the tests, and then it shows that, well, my data is free from a uh, multi-core issue. Or you can say, well, I dif discovered that uh, there is a multi-core issue. So what should I do? You have to fix it. When you have a multi-collinearity issue, means that one of your variables are related to another. For instance, this one, bet 2 and bet 3. They are actually measuring the same thing. That's why you may have multi-collinearity issue. So when you run the VIF test, this one, for multi-collinearity. Okay, I have to, okay. So when you run this test, so this test will tell you which variable that have a problem. So that variable should be dropped from your model. Okay, so so that's what do I I'm expecting to see from your uh, assignment. Okay, so none of you have done that. Okay, because this is just the exercise of your econometric class. Okay, I'm not here to teach you the econometric, but because uh, when I uh, check your assignment, as if like you, as if like you are not really clear on the econometric part, as if like you don't have a, a, a good information or a good knowledge on econometrics. So I, be, I believe we have to discuss it thoroughly so that next time when you do your assignment in other courses or when you want to do a higher level of study, you will be clear on the econometric part because for economic students, we should be very good in econometric. At least you have to have the basic. So I couldn't see your strong basic in econometric that's why we have to have a discussion okay so um that's the 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 answer that i'm expecting from step number three okay oh uh item number three okay number four provide an estimates of the relevant non-market value so you have to give me the estimation do you know what is estimation Estimation is your beta, your parameter. So let me write it here. When you have a model, mm, I'm looking for my marker. Okay, this one. So this is the price, or let's put loan price equals to. So you have beta one plus bet. This is beta not. Beta one, perhaps you have bet, and then plus beta two, perhaps you're gonna have distance, and perhaps whatever it is. So this beta, or you may put alpha, not, or whatever, this is your parameter. This is your, uh, we call it coefficient. Okay, let me write it here. Coefficient or parameter or estimation. This is our estimation. So I want you to give me an estimation of non-market values okay and you will just give the interpretation later on okay so how to get the estimations of non-market value so let's write a new model so loan price equals to beta naught plus beta one let's assume you have bet plus beta two you have um distance plus beta three okay let's see so bet is not a uh, the non-market valuation, right? Non-market value uh, variable. So do you know what is non-market variable? Non-marketed good. So we have learned about non-market goods such as public goods or environmental goods, right? Or the resources which are not uh, marketed, which have no values, no price in the market. So let's look at the, the whole variable. So this is just the time. So do you know that uh, time will have an impact on the price of a uh, house? Normally, uh, after some times, the housing price will keep increasing, right? When you first uh, build the house, the price is maybe like 200000 But later on, the price will go up gradually, okay? That's why people will say it's good to purchase a house because the, pr the price will keep increasing compared to purchase uh, vehicles or cars. Because the price of cars or vehicles will depreciate, right? Both are assets, uh, fixed asset. Cars and house is are fixed asset, but 
the price for the house will keep increasing. So time definitely will have an impact on the housing price. So, but time is not uh, the environmental good, right? You cannot sell time. So size, this is the size of the house. Okay, so let me put it here. Okay, this is a uh, hedonic. Okay, uh, maybe I put it here. Hedonic price says that the price of your house depends on what? Three things. So, it depends on the structural characteristic of your house, depends on the, what is it? Depends on, what is it? Have we learned about hedonic just now, uh, before? What are the determinants of housing price? Anyone? Hmm. Depends on the environmental, where is it? Environmental characteristic of the house. And the last one, what is the last one? Last variable that will affect our housing price? Hmm. No one has remembered it? Hmm, that's the problem. When you do the assignment, you don't remember it. Okay, let me just go quickly to the variable that can affect your house. Um, just one point. Depends on the neighborhood characteristics. Yeah, so the second point is neighborhood characteristic of the house. So, structural characteristic of the house is like bed, number of room, it's like um, the size of the house, <coughs> um, the garage. So, these are all structural characteristics of house environment. So, this is the environmental good. Like if, let's say, your house is close to waterfall, right? If, let's say, your house is close to forest. So, closure to this amenity will have a higher price on your house. Neighborhood. For instance, if your house is close to city area or facilities, close to traffic, uh, what else? Um, your price is close to the crime, uh, crime area. So when your house is located in crime area, so the price will be lower. So <coughs> this variable will affect our housing price. So in this case, let me see. Um, okay, so size is the structural characteristic. Bed is also structure. Okay, garage is structure. Okay, and suite is your structure. UG is underground wire, which is talking about the structure of the house. Traffic. So what is traffic? Anyone? What is traffic? So when you talk about traffic, uh, is it uh, structure of the house? It is not structure, isn't it? Okay, so is it uh, neighborhood or is it environment? Okay, for your information, so traffic can be uh, environmental good. How can it be? So... Let me write it here. We will look at all the variables one by one so that you can know what are they, which classification, which category are they belong to, are they structural, are they environment, are they neighborhood. So let me put it here. Traffic. What else? Distance. This is distance to CBD. How far is your house from the central business district? Means that how far your house is from the city. So definitely... When you talk about the distance from the facilities, this is the neighborhood characteristics of the house. View. Definitely, this is the environmental goods. View means that whether your house has a nice view or nice scenery. So, view is the environmental good. So, you have view 2, view 3, condition 2, condition 3. So, condition is also um, environmental good. So, what is the definition for condition? Um, okay, whether you have uh, average external condition means that 
your external uh, or we can say that in front of your house there are like some uh, good condition uh, normally when we talk about external it is outside your house but the conditions or the it is also very close to view but they term it in a different way okay so this both view and condition are talking about environmental good so view is showing sceneries while condition is telling the conditions around your house whether you have many gardens whether you have a nice conditions of your environment surrounding your house okay so it is also talking about the environmental good okay next what are the variable okay so let me put it here traffic um uh, view so you can have view one two three and whatever and then you can also have condition what else um Calwell, okay, and Mark. So Calwell is a uh, is an area, okay. So uh, basically, this variable, this data are talking about these two area, two place, Calwell and uh, and Mark Arthur. Mark, okay. So these are the suburb or the area, okay. So when you talk about area or suburb. They are actually covering everything. Okay, so it's better not to put them because when you talk about, let me put it here, Caldwell and uh, Mark Arthur. So when you talk about this area, they will cover everything. They will cover um, the traffic. They will cover the view. They will cover many other things inside it. So it's better not to put them because this whole area will include all these variables inside them. So you will have a problem with anti because they are also measuring other things. That's why you have to be careful when you want to pick your variable. Okay? So for traffic, why do traffic fall under environmental good? Okay, when you have traffic, uh, what kind of pollution will you have? You will have noise pollution. You will have um air pollution and all this kind of pollution you can have traffic jam well everything right congestion so these are actually capturing your um non-marketed good is capture your negative externality so you can put traffic as your environmental good okay so the question asks you to give the estimation so you have to make sure that you put one of them or some of them, traffic or view and condition, into your model so that you can come up with the estimations of the environmental good. While for the traffic, you will have negative value, negative coefficient because traffic is a negative externality. When you have traffic, it will give negative impacts to the price. When you have view or condition, it will give a positive impact to your price. It depends. Okay, that's why you have to try and error which variable is significant and then you will put into your equation which variable is not significant, then take it out. That's how you play around with the variable. Okay, remember in the real world, you are dealing with so many variables, thousands or millions of variables, but you are the one who should be able to choose which variable are actually relevant. Okay. So I highlighted here, I listed here the variable to measure your environmental good. Okay, traffic, view, and condition. So you have to play around which variable is actually significant. You then you can perhaps you can include all of them, or maybe you can just include one of them. Okay, but you have to try and error which variable. But currently, none of you have estimated this environmental good variable. Okay, so you are not answering my question. Okay, so next one, because uh, uh, the purpose of this assignment is not, uh, is not meant to ask you to find the best model, but the best model possible, but your task is just to uh, practice or to apply this tool so that you sh can actually, at your own uh, hand, able to find the model. Okay, so the next one is, once you uh, have estimated have uh, estimate your variable you should be able to interpret your estimation so the interpretation i have mentioned it in our lecture 
Okay, so the same interpretation, right? If let's say you are talking about um, which beta? This beta, beta 1. So 1%, if you are talking about percent, 1% increase here. If let's say you are talking about positive environmental good, then your housing price will increase by one another percent. Or if let's say you are talking about traffic, 1% increase here will have a reduction in or decrease by whatever percent. If you want to explain it in terms of percentage. But remember, if you are talking about loan, so it will become percentage. But for uh, this one, uh, traffic of you, they are not in terms of loan. So maybe instead of percent here, one unit increase or one room, one bedroom increase here, you will have 1% increase, uh, reductions or whatever. Okay, so in terms of the interpretation, this is, uh, you have to be careful whether you have to use percentage or unit. Right. So let me put it here, mm, a new sh uh, sheet. So for your model, because different model will have a different interpretation. So you can have linear, linear. It means that your dependent variable is linear and your independent variable is also linear. You can also have linear and non-linear. So here, Maybe uh, your independent variable is in terms of log or in terms of you have um, um, perhaps time and then you have squared. Okay, so if this non-linear, you can have linear and linear. You can also have non-linear and linear like our case just now. So our dependent variable is a log price and maybe your bet is linear. So when you have this, so how do you want to interpret a uh, one unit? This is in terms of its own unit. So if you talk about room, one room increase. Okay, so one additional room. When you talk about what? Um, book, for instance, one unit of book, whatever. So linear, you will explain it in terms of unit. So one unit increase here will be translated by, if, because this is non-linear, so it will become percentage. I don't know whether it is increased or decreased by whatever percent. And then you also have non-linear and non-linear. So when you have non-linear, non-linear, then uh, the percentage with percentage. Linear, linear, unit with unit. Okay, so the way you explain it, unit and unit. This is non-linear percentage with unit. Okay, so you have to be Careful. Are we talking about linear linear model? So the explanation is unit and unit. Are we talking about linear and linear or non linear and linear? So this thing, uh, I'm expecting you to know it. Okay. So when you know about the model, you should know on how to interpret it. Okay. So next, number five. So basically, this exercise will just take half an hour of your time. Okay. But sometimes when you want to find, you want to play around with the model, which model will give you the smallest AIC and BIC, maybe you will uh, take some time to play around with the data. But as long as you show that you are choosing some variable and then among all these variables, you have some selection, then that will somehow give you some mark to tell me that you have understood the steps to conduct your test or regression. Okay. And number five indicates any caveats. As I told you, caveat is like shortcoming or problem. You wish to append to estimate and make suggestion for improving. So when you are estimating your data, your, your model, so uh, do you find any problem, any any issue that you, you think that when you don't have that issue, you will have a better estimation? Okay, so in this case, how do you want to answer this? You have to look at your variable. Okay, so currently you are given uh, the real sales price, which is your dependent variable, and the time, and so on. Do you think that all these variables <coughs> are the, the one, or all these variables are enough to explain your uh, housing price? Do you think that they are all sufficient to explain uh, your dependent variable? So sometimes there are also many other variables that can also explain your housing price, but they are not included here. 
So do you think any other variable that can affect your uh, dependent variable? Any 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 idea? Is there any variable? So currently you have bedroom. Um, you have the size of the house, this uh, distance to your CBD or distance to the city. You have garage. You have an and suite. You have underground wire traffic. What are other variables that can affect your housing price? So for your information, different country will have different independent variable. Okay, let me just give you, okay, I have to open a new sheet. Okay. Because I don't want you to think that these are all the variable that can affect the housing price. No, the different country will have different variable. So let me write it here. This is the housing price. This is a function of, okay, this is structural characteristic, right? Characteristics. Okay, so um, plus a uh, neighborhood plus, um, what else? Uh, environmental characteristics. Okay, uh, in overseas, normally for those countries who have a four season, okay, uh, sometimes they have garage which is mentioned here okay the garage will be one variable that can also affect the housing price because they really love to have garage and sometimes they also need garden okay it is very common in overseas house that they have garden at the backs of the house and the garden will have a value added value to the house if you don't have garden means that you are living in a low cost house low cost housing area so if you have a garden, means that you are living in a not really elite area, but you are living in a comfort uh, area. So garden is also one of the factors that can affect the housing price in um, many countries. But in Malaysia, garage and garden have no impacts on the housing price. So these two variables are actually not a relevant variable in the Malaysia's case. Okay, so in Malaysia, what are the variables that can affect our housing price? So uh, the example is like, surprisingly, most is one of the important variables that can affect the housing price in Malaysia. How come? Uh, can we say that all Malaysians are Muslim? No, but surprisingly, the impacts of, of most are uh, two ways. If let's say you are Muslim, so the presence or the existence of mosque will have a positive impact on the housing price. If, you are, if your house are close to mosque or in your housing area you have the mosque, so it will give uh, added value to your house. But if let's say you are not Muslim, but in your housing area you have the mosque, so it will give a negative uh, impact on the housing price if you are not Muslim. Okay, so um, well, you can uh, also think of what are the other variables that can affect housing price? Many things. Forest. Some people love to be close to the forest. Or uh, amenity. For instance, um, like river. If, you if your house is close to river, so it will give uh, added value to your house. Or waterfall. Um, what else? Um, maybe you can think of... Um, what else? What are the variables that you think can affect your housing price? Remember, uh, we didn't even touch for the neighborhoods. If let's say your housing is actually in the uh, crime area or in whatever area, whatever if uh, neighborhood characteristic that can affect our housing price. So this variable, you can just Google. So basically, this is just the, the exercise for you to check. What are the other variables that can affect the housing price? Okay, so in this case, this price, these uh, variables are actually taken from the case of Australia. So you have to search what are the variables that can affect the housing price in Australia because they will have a different variable. Definitely garden is not mentioned here and garden is very important variable to affect the housing price. So when you don't have this relevant variable, Included into your model, so your model will be um, 
not accurate. So this will give you, uh, we call a caveat that can actually affect the estimations of your model. Okay, so you think that, well, because the guidance is important, but it is not included in your data set. So it will affect my estimation. Okay, so also for the environmental uh, characteristics, they also have forests here, but they didn't mention in this data set. So because of this missing relevant variable, it will affect your estimation. So next one. So make suggestions for improving the valuations or your estimation. So you can suggest <coughs> we have to collect the data for garden, data for forest, and whatever. Uh, based on my <coughs> previous uh, semester, some of my students suggest uh, we have to have like shopping mall because shopping mall will have an, a positive impact on the housing price. And some of the students suggest close to the national park or um, playground and so on. So you can just, well, basically, definitely you have to search for the real variable, but these are some of the possible um, suggestion, okay, to improve your estimation. So with that, I think that are all about our assignment. It was a very simple exercises, okay? Uh, I do have, the right or the perfect or the best fit model which is given here i didn't expect that from you okay so the best fit model is that the log of distance so your distance to cbd should should be actually in terms of log because when you talk about distance your data are actually in terms of continuous variable so remember as i told you when you are dealing with continuous variable especially when the variable are actually in a large number so you have to put log to make your estimation become smooth. So your uh, distance should be in terms of loan. Okay. So this is the best fit model that um, that uh, you can get from this data set. Even though I didn't expect this from you. I just expecting that you have exercise. You have applied the right method to estimate it. And then your size should be in terms of square. Okay. This is the... So do you know what do we mean when we put squared in our model? And your time should also be in terms of squared. Okay, let me tell you so that you know. Uh, when we put a uh, log, there must be something. When we put squared, there must be something. Okay, so here, uh, this is expansion for squared. When you squared the variable, okay, so in this case, um, let me, the dis because the distance is also, is it distance squared? Um, no, size, the size squared. Okay, okay. So squared, uh, you can explain it in terms of the size of the house becomes squared or let me also explain the distance because sometimes the distance can also be squared. But in this case, the distance is not squared because when you put squared, uh, it becomes uh, less significant. Okay, how come the size becomes squared? It means, so squared means that you're going to have something like this or something like this. Means that uh, you start from uh, the smallest number and then you will keep increasing and then you fall. Okay, so when you have this, uh, the housing size becomes squared. So let me put here squared. It says that uh, uh, the size has a positive impact, right? If you have this kind of shape. The size of the house has a positive impact on the housing price, on the price of the house. Uh, so when you keep increasing the size of the house, so uh, the size of the house, for instance, 500 square feet, so the price will be positive, price will be higher. You keep increasing the housing, uh, the size of the house, the, the price will be higher. But after some point, when you keep increasing the house of the size, well, it doesn't really affect your housing price, okay? When your house is like too big, like a hall, so it will ha have a little impact on your price, okay? So that's the condition. If let's say we explain about the distance, okay? So distance uh, of from your house, okay? How far it is from your house, for instance, the CBD. 
So when your house is close to CBD, definitely, when if let's say you can walk to your city, so house around or close to the city will have a higher price, right? Isn't it? Okay, but after some time, when your house is inside the CBD, inside the city, so definitely you will have the chaos, like the traffic, uh, you will have so many people uh, uh, walking next to your house, they will keep talking and so on. So you will face this kind of noise pollution, air pollution or whatever. So the price is actually will be falling. Okay, it's not that as good as uh, the house which is maybe two kilometers from the city. If let's say you are inside the city, maybe the price is not as good as those who are slightly uh, far away from the CBD. That's how it is, uh, how do the squared can be explained. Okay. Okay. Now, um, yeah, these are the base model, but I didn't expect you to come up uh, with the best model. I'm just expecting to see that you are able to uh, use the right step or right method to come up with your model. Okay. So now I have explained this. I wanted to definitely um, stop our recording because this recording will be shared in the YouTube so that for those who join the class late can watch it. Okay.